Yes, okay. Can you all hear me? Yes, great, fantastic. All right. Welcome to the webinar, Building for Excellence in Sales Teams. My name is Ravi, and I wear two hats. One is running a company called Mercury Goldman, which is the world's largest sales performance consulting organization. The second hat I wear is of running the organization Search Team Development India to promote and help organizations and individuals gain the power of Belvin team roles. Today is a bit of a nice fusion between the two. So Belvin for excellence in sales teams. This is part of our Belvin knowledge series. But the one thing we want to do is to contribute some knowledge, some wisdom, some insights based on our experience and our working in sales as well as Belvin to people like you so that we can all become a little more effective, a little more stronger, a little more wiser, a little more successful. So that is the purpose behind the Belvin Knowledge Series. Excellence in Sales Team is the webinar of the day. I want to make it a bit interactive. I would request all of you to mute your systems and we will not use videos to get the best of the bandwidth available. And I might ask you some questions and do a little task and ask you to respond to me and you can respond to everyone on the chat box. So we use the chat box as a way to sort of engage with each other. This webinar will take about 30 to 40 minutes of valuable time. And at the end of it, I will send you my mail ID as well. And if you want to engage with me, talk to me, have some uh, clarification, share some insights, pick up some more knowledge, most welcome to do. Knowledge is one thing when we all share, we become better individually and collectively. So thank you for your time and welcome to Belvin for Excellence in Sales Team. Quick question to you. Uh, how many of you in this webinar are in sales function? How many of you or in sales, you actually do sales. How many of you quickly? Maybe just Abhijit, okay, fantastic. There's one, who else? I've got Abhijit. Yeah, you got money, you got Hites, Forum, Jackson, Shamit, wow, there's a lot of people here, a lot of people here, oh, fantastic. Wow, he's a bunch of sales guys, and I've been a sales guy for 40 years now. Such a nice thing to be here with sales guys here. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay, great. Great, all right. Okay, collection function, something you say is as well. All right, okay, good. And if you look at the word sales team, a very interesting word. Uh, if you look at the word sales team, when do you think sales teams are required? Very funny question I'm asking you. Let's say there is a regional sales head and you've got 10 people working with him or her. In some way, we can use the word sales team. But if you think of, let's say, sports, if you think of, let's say, uh, yeah, probably sports or projects, what is the meaning of the word team in sports? What's the meaning of the word team in projects? All right, text me some of your answers. When they say teams in sports, teams in projects, uh, what, are those, what does it mean actually? What does it mean? Yep. Common goal, fantastic. Collective effort, brilliant, absolutely. Execution, yeah, together makes it happen, absolutely. Of course, team also strategizes on the field itself, okay? Collection of people aligned towards a common goal, oh, that's fantastic, brilliant. Okay, which means the moment we use the T word, customer satisfaction, ultimate goal, absolutely fine, Johnson. The moment you use the word teams, what do the teams actually do? The teams work together. 
the teams work together. If I am a salesperson working in my territory, and there's another salesperson working in his territory, and there's a third salesperson working in his territory, and we all come and meet every month for a meeting with our boss, we are part of a sales organization, but we are not really a sales team unless they are working together towards a common goal. Therefore, the question I'm going to ask you is, when, does, when is a sales team required to work together? When there are two or three or four or five salespeople required to work together? Under what circumstances, under what context a sales team is formed, whether expected or required to work together? Give me some examples of situations when salespeople must work together as a team towards one common goal. Some examples. Some examples. Yeah, okay. Make money, oh, all right, okay, right. Target completion, but there are a little bit about individual targets also. I think Jackson says nicely shared interest. Under what situation two or three salespeople are required to be put together to really work very effectively? Match up client compliances, decision makers and new face for different territory. Fantastic. Average is a lovely statement. That means you may have, let's say, for example, a customer with a corporate office in Mumbai has got a factory in South, has got a couple of factories in North, people are in different locations, and the efforts complement each other. We've got to put together a team to work together. I think it's required. What are we going to focus today is we are going to look at how we can really have a sales team working on, clearly, if you see here, large opportunities in terms of deals or large accounts. You've got a big deal going on. One sales guy cannot do the job. You need multiple sales guys to work. The customer may be in multiple territories, as you said nicely. I've just talked about it. Customer may be in multiple locations. Customer may be in multiple functions. The decision making is a little bit more complex. Or you've got a large customer, a large account, a key account, and you're going to have a team working together. And if you're going to have a team working together, it could be a sales team, a salesperson, a technical salesperson, a project management salesperson, they all have to work together. How do we work together to leverage opportunities of large deals and large accounts? So that's what we're going to focus on. That means, do we use team selling effectively? Sales team means a sales team must sell as a team together on specific context, specific needs, specific situation. So how can we use team selling very, very effectively? Quick question to you. When a group of salespeople are required to work together, when a group of salespeople are required to work together on a large opportunity, on a large account on a regular basis, quickly tell me, guys, what are the things that can go wrong? I'm sure there are many things that can go right, but what are the things that can go wrong when a group of salespeople could be sales, technical sales, doesn't matter. Hey, absolutely. Miscommunication, it is Patel, brilliantly. Okay, what else can go wrong? Some more examples. 10 seconds for a text message. Come on. What can go wrong? Miscommunication, it is. Started it off nicely. Coordination, that's a beautiful word, use the word. Coordination. Right, that can go wrong. Absolutely. Good. Good. What else can go wrong? Negotiation. Absolutely. Team equations and agenda can go wrong. Yes. The equation. Can I use the word chemistry can go wrong? Competition instead of collaboration. Brilliant. Internal competition instead of collaboration can go wrong. Planning can go wrong. Maybe the wrong guy may do the planning. The right guy may not do the planning. Priorities can be different as well. Brilliant. So when we look at team selling, we got to really look at it in a different way. It's not one individual. Many are customers trying to sell. When a team is involved, 
with large opportunities or with large accounts, how do we use team selling very effectively? Because, because teams in sales pursuits can be challenging. When there's a large opportunity to be captured, a large prospect to be broken, a large account to be managed very effectively, continuously, you have teams involved in sales, and these pursuits can be challenging for the number of reasons you guys talk very beautifully. But awareness of Belbin team rules can provide pointers to help sales teams win big. Sales teams are formed because we are looking at big wins. Small wins, we don't need teams. Small wins, individuals are enough. Big wins require putting together a wonderful sales team. Awareness of Belbin team roles can provide pointers. Excuse me, what is this Belbin team role? Part one of this webinar, Belbin team roles. All Belbin knowledge series is built on a beautiful way. We first cover the Belbin team roles in part one for a few moments nicely, give you an insight to a powerful philosophy, a powerful tool, and then build on it a specific application of the team roles. And today's webinar, the application is teams in selling or sales teams effectiveness. All right, okay. Dr. Merit Belbin, who will be celebrating his 92nd birthday in the month of June, with whom I worked for the last 15 years, created a path-breaking discovery of a phenomenal behavior-based understanding and application called Belbin team roles. What is a team role? All of us have got two roles in life, by and large. One is a functional role, the job that we do. A sales executive, a sales engineer, a sales manager, a sales support manager, a general manager, we have functional role. The functional role keeps changing, keeps improving, keeps enhancing. That's a natural process of development, natural process of growth. But there's another team role, which is what we call a team role. Functional role and team role. Functional role and a team role. What is this team role? A team role, a beautiful definition of Dr. Meredith Belbin is tendency to behave, contribute, and interrelate with others in a particular way. Lovely verse. Let's look at this lovely, beautiful word because we are going to walk into the phenomenal concept tool, the Belbin team roles. Let's look at the lovely verse tendency. Can you quickly text me and tell me few examples at least. What's the meaning of the word tendency? What does the word tendency tell you? What's the meaning of the word tendency? What is this tendency? Behavior, inclination, absolutely, beautiful. Inclination, I would say a natural aptitude, a natural inclination. I like the word default nature. That looks like a very IT word, default nature. Okay, good. Attitude. Josie Sai is talking about the word attitude. I'll come back to that attitude a little later, Josie Sai. I'll make a note. I hope I'm saying it right. Josie S A. Okay, all right. Okay. I like the word Jackson talks about beautifully. Disposition. Okay. Uh, ability to put in other shoes, a little bit more like empathy. And the word disposition is the way I look at certain things. The way I do certain things in a natural way, that's a tendency. All right, let's look at the word tendency. Second word is to behave. Tendency to behave. Let's take natural tendency a little more detail. Uh, let me pick up some good example. Uh, how many of you, I'm sure some of you must be eating breakfast properly every day. I hope so, at least, to keep yourself fit and healthy. Uh, let me take some quick examples. Kitesh, what's your favorite dish for breakfast you love? You can have it every day. It's such a lovely dish, you love it every day. Come on, Hitesh. Give me your favorite dish for breakfast. Quickly. Grains food. All right, okay, okay. 
Uh, okay, and rice Italy. Oh, fantastic. Good. Italy. Italy. Four. Is it four Italy? I'm just Italy. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, let's have somebody else. Uh, maybe, maybe one more person. What's your favorite dish? Yeah, one more person. Fruit. My God. Fruit. Healthy guy. Look like he tastes like dosa as well. That's fantastic. Good. Uh, let's go back to Lokendra. You love Italy, Lokendra. That's great. What is one dish you don't like for breakfast? You can't have it unless there's no other choice. You may still have it rarely, but you don't like it. Come on, Lokendra. Tell me one dish you don't like for breakfast. Quickly. Shouldn't take too long. Same thing for Hitesh, maybe. Same thing for Madhusudan, maybe. Oh, Tamil Salman loves Upma. Okay. Johnson Rice, Lokendra. Lokendra, no samosas in the morning breakfast. Wow. Okay, okay. All right, okay. What about you? What about you, Hitesh? What is it you don't like? Madhusudan, nothing. A lovely guy. You like everything. What about you, Hitesh? Quickly, one. Hitesh. Nothing. Wow. Wonderful guys. No issues at all. Okay. Think about it. We all have our natural preferences in simple things like breakfast. Absolutely. But we like some things very much. We don't like some things. Of course, some people don't have no likes, dislikes, or other. They like few things. Everything else is okay. In between the things which we can have it. If it's a simple thing by breakfast, we have this. What about behavior? So tendency to behave. Tendency to behave. Let me give you an example. Let's say many years ago, when I was uh, today, I spent about 41 years working. So that's uh, a 40 years ago, 41 years ago, 42 years ago, maybe 45 even. Or just when I started work, let's say for example, I have a, it's a Saturday evening or a Friday evening. I used to work six days. So Saturday evening, uh, suddenly at about 6:30, I go to a friend of mine and I tell him, "Hey, let's go for a film, man. Let's go for a picture." And the other guy says, okay, good idea. Let's jump into the bike. We jump onto the bike and we keep, he keeps driving, riding, and I'm the pillion. And I tell him, hey, suppose we don't get tickets for this movie, what happens? No problem. We will see another movie. Okay. If we don't get any tickets, no problem. We'll have a meal and come back. Let's have fun. That's more important. Saturday evening, chill out a bit. One guy. Second guy. Another friend, I go to him in the evening, 6.30. Hey, shall we go for a film today? Saturday evening, shall we go for a film? What's the day today? Saturday. What's the time now? 6.40 actually. Do you expect films, especially good films, to be available easily at 6.40 on a Saturday by the time we reach? Come on. If you want to go for a movie on a Saturday, when do you think you should thought about it? Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, good. Completely different behavior. And next week, if I had to go and ask one of them, hey, shall we go for a film? Tell me, guys, will I ask the first guy or will I ask the second guy? One or two quick answers? That's only the first guy. The second guy makes life complicated. I just asked for a movie. He wants me to plan, damn it. Both behave differently, but both believe. They're contributing. The first five things is contributing towards having a fun on a Saturday evening. The second guy also in his mind thinks he's contributing. How do you think he thinks he's contributing? Any quick text answers? Yep, quick. How do you think he thinks he's contributing? The second guy in his mind? Any one of you can answer? First, he supports you. What about the second guy? How do you think he thinks he's contributing in his mind? He also thinks he's contributing. Ah, oh, somebody said nicely, helping you to think logically. I don't want this guy go, waste his money, see a stupid film and get a headache and pay for the headache. No way. He's a disorganized guy. I'm going to make him organized. But we think they are saving you disappointment. Absolutely. Lovely Alpha. But we think the first guy is contributing, the second guy is negative. So tendency to behave, contribute, and interrelate, talk to each other in a particular way. That's a team role. So functional role and a team role. And Dr. Dr. Merit Belvin discovery revealed that there are nine team roles. 
This discovery took over nine years of research in Cambridge, and it came out with a very powerful, practical way, affable, very, very interesting and a unique way, the nine team rules. And the nine team rules can be bucketed in three big buckets. One is task or action related team rules. What are these? The task and action related team rules are the first one is a shaper. You can see the symbol of a shaper, which is the whip, challenging, dynamic, goal oriented, has drive and courage, strong guy, goal oriented. Obstacles are not important for him, he can handle them. Once achieved targets, absolutely focused towards that. Outcome is very important. Weakness, you can see the smiley O oh, crying a little bit. Prone to provocation, can be blunt and upset people. Some of you might have experience working with a boss, a strong shaper. Go to him and say, boss, today I have a stomach upset. Oh God, as long as there are stomachs, they'll be upset some days. Forget about it, get back to work. You've got to achieve it today. Strong, positive, focused in terms of goals, but can be provocative and upset people. Implementer, you can see the beautiful, the transmission system working. This sprint, organized, efficient, turns ideas into action. Process-driven guy. Time is very important. Task to be done within the time. Has a checklist nicely. Weakness, somewhat inflexible. Slow to respond to new ideas and approaches. Having decided, doesn't want to change direction. We have decided, no change, let's go ahead. Bit resistant to change, inflexible. The third guy, look at the symbol, the spanner. You want to really tighten the bowls, nuts and bowls in a wheel, in a car, it's going to be precisely tight. More tight, there's resistance for the wheel to move. Less tight, the wheel comes off. It's going to be exact, therefore accurate, conscientious, meticulous, perfectionist. Everything it does immaculately well. Negative side, inclined to worry and duty, reluctant to delegate. Everything has to be done so well. Oh God, nowadays people are not so perfect. They don't have that extra sense of consciousness. Reluctant to delegate. Three team roles, shaper, implementer, and complete official. That's task oriented. You have people oriented team roles. Team oriented, social oriented team role. The first one is a beautiful one, resource investigator. Look at the lovely symbol, the beautiful phone, the mobile, we should probably change it to mobile. Enthusiastic, communicative, expose opportunity, develops contacts. Early morning, 5.30, gets up, six gets up, first job for half an hour is on the Facebook. Very essential. Then, you have, of course, the risk of him is he is over optimistic, can get easily bored, and lose interest. Contact, networking. Your coordinator, look at the symbol, the coordinator, calm, confident, clarifies goals, promotes joint decision making. The shaper looks at individual decision making. Majority doesn't matter. Decisions are important. Coordinator encourages people to contribute, gets their ideas, steers them in a nice way, like a steering a car gypsy. Weakness can be seen a bit manipulative. And sometimes you wonder, sometimes when people watch the Western Symphony, the orchestra, hey, everybody's having some instrument, everybody's doing something. This guy's simply standing there and, you know, moving something up and down. What the hell is he doing? Everybody seems to have some, something in front of them as well to guide a coordinator. But without a coordinator, the whole resources cannot be utilized very effectively as well. And you have a third guy, like a lubricant in an engine. The value of a lubricant is known only, only when the lubricant is absent. When everything is working nicely, we don't even see the value of lubricant. When lubricant is not there, the engine is hot. Tensions are high at teamwork. Cooperative, caring, diplomatic, sensitive, averse friction may be indecisive when faced with tough decisions because every decision has an impact on people. 
how, how can I hurt people? Not possible. Resource investigators, coordinators, and a team worker. Three team or social related team roles. The next one is thinking related team roles. Individual related team roles. The plant. The beautiful word plant comes, plants an idea in the team. Comes up with some creative idea. The bulb is a symbol we discovered long back in the 80s, early 80s. Creative guy, imaginative, original, offers alternative approaches. But sometimes he's thinking within himself and therefore may not be communicative. The plant, the right brain thinker. On the other side, you have a monitor evaluator, logical thinker, the symbol of the third eye, logical, analytical, discerning, makes decisions based on facts. For the person, facts are important. Everything is logical, but can be at times, appear to be slow moving, lacks drive, and may appear uninspiring. He can see the wrong side more. He can see the negative side more. He can see the weaknesses more. He can see the dark side more. He can see the potholes ahead. So the don't rush and fall. The plant, the monitor evaluator. And your third and the last team role, the specialist. Specialist is motivated by knowledge, single minded towards knowledge, pursuit of knowledge. Knowledge for the joy of knowledge itself is extremely important. And that makes the big difference to the person as well. So you've got nine team roles. The shaper, the resource investigator, the implementer, the computer finisher, the resource investigator, the coordinator, and the team worker, the plan, one evaluator, and specialist. The beauty is that all of us are having all the nine team roles. They can eat all the breakfast. We can take all of it. But some breakfast we love, some breakfast we do it rarely. Some, we can manage it. If each one of us has got all the nine team roles, but some are our preferred team roles, some are our manageable team roles, and some are our least preferred team roles. Preferred team roles, manageable team roles, and least preferred team roles. Typically out of the nine team roles, the first two or three are preferred team roles, the mid four are manageable team roles, and the last two are the least preferred team roles. This is a powerful discovery of Dr. Meredith Belbin. All of us have got a functional role and a team role. We were all the nine team roles, but we behave differently depending upon which are our preferred team roles, which are our managed team roles, which are our least preferred team roles. That means we are what we repeatedly do. The famous statement by Aristotle, our behavior is what others see. Our behavior is what others see. That means when we work in team selling, we are not just technically selling, we are working with people. Therefore, our customers may have their own preferred team roles. One of your customers, people, can be very logical. Another person who is highly goal-oriented, there's probably a third person who is highly networked, who likes to work with people. There's somebody else who is constantly looking for perfection. When you make a presentation, he can spot what is wrong rather than what is right. Therefore, how can we use all these team roles very effectively when it comes to selling in teams on how to make sales team effectively. So part two, building for excellence in sales team. When do we need teams to sell? As I discussed sometime earlier, we need teams to sell under some specific situation. A large deal or an opportunity. We are working on a big prospect deal, a real big opportunity. It's a go, no go. It's a make or break situation. We've got to do it well. 
a large deal or an opportunity. You can't just leave it easily. You've got to work diligently. You've got to make it happen. The risks are too high. A large key account. You've got to consistently manage them. Customer satisfaction is very important. You have to have a team working together. The team includes the salespeople. The team includes the after sales team. The includes the backup team. The includes technical sales team. A large key account. And there's a big prospect I want to break in. He is not of my customer so far. He is a huge prospect. Tremendous potential. Strong competition customer. I got to break in. I had to go as an army. I've got to catch the elephant. As Subrata Bhakti says, it's not catching a rabbit. When you want to catch an elephant, the sales team has to work as a team. It's a team which is going to make a big impact. So a large deal or opportunity, a large key account, and a large key prospect break-in, we must make sure that there is outstanding work in the way the teams work. That's where Belvin team role plays a big role. Because customers got multiple people. The customer's people may have different behavioral preferences. Their inclination, their tendency, their tendency to engage could be very different. I don't know how many of you have experienced. You're prepared nicely for a presentation to a customer. You walk into the customer's place. And you expect the presentation to be 30 minutes time you're prepared and it was agreed. And the moment you go, you start the presentation. One big guy says, can you make it fast in five minutes time? Just tell me the gist. I don't want to hear everything else. Have you experienced it, guys? Quickly tell me yes or no. Have you gone through that? Have you? Yes, very much. And sometimes, the moment you start communicating, somebody says, don't tell me everything. I just want to tell me what am I going to get out of that? What is the ROI? That's all. Impatient people. There are some people who are looking at the logical constructive representation. Possible. And somebody, you made a wonderful presentation. Everything is ready. You're presenting it. And one guy in the corner says, where did you get this logo of ours? It's an old logo. Can't you get the right logo? For him, whatever good you show is not important. The little error in the logo is a problem for him because he is looking for accuracy. So multiple people, multiple needs. When you work with large opportunity, large account, people have different kinds of needs. There are some common needs. With a unique individual need, people are different. They're diverse set of people when you work with lots of opportunities. Multiple needs and, as I said now, multiple behaviors. Three beautiful things to keep in mind. People are different. Their needs are different. Their behaviors are different. Same way, in our own sales teams, we are different. Our behaviors are different. Our way of working is different. How can we therefore have a standard way without getting the advantage, the benefit of sales excellence in teams? This is where understanding the well-being team roles of us, our own teams, and understand the customer's team roles, looking at his behavior, spotting his behavior, and making sure, yeah, I need to adapt my behavior. This person is the right person to talk to this person, the customer. I can handle this person. Putting together a strategy based on people to people, using behavior understanding is a key to winning in excellence in team. Because remember, sales cycle is long and complex. Because whenever you have large opportunity, it can be complex situation. We have to adapt to the context very vital. It is not computers which are buying. It's people who are buying with all their valuable nature. And the risk factors are too many. We can't afford to make a mistake. Therefore, putting together our team in the right way, understanding the customer's team in the right way, and building it beautifully, 
matching each other nicely, adapting to each person effectively, getting the best chemistry on both sides is a critical aspect of sales in teams. Therefore, if you look at it in a simple way, a concerted team effort is key to winning large opportunities, a competition break-in, and when you handle large accounts. Otherwise, we can't be effective and successful. Therefore, teaming is all about the right balance in our teams. When we put together our own team of people to work with accounts, understanding each other, building the balance with each other is extremely vital to make the teams work well. So, what makes an effective team? Three things. Representation of the required team roles. We need all the team roles in a team to make sure that the team is effective. We don't need nine people in a team because each one of us has got two or three preferred roles and manageable roles. Besides our education, besides our qualification, our behavior balance is very vital in a team. And once we do that, we can use the relationships that complement each other, exploit our strengths, and minimize our weaknesses. Every team will have some weakness, but like somebody said beautifully, and Dr. Meredith Ben outstandingly sees it, nobody is perfect, but a team can be. Nobody is perfect, but a team can be. And each one of us understand our strengths, our weaknesses, and other strengths, other weaknesses. We can work as a team in an outstanding way. Be ready to handle a large opportunity, handle large account, or handle a competition, breaking customer very strongly. Therefore, when we select teams for selling to such big risk opportunities, look at the following steps. One, we need some critical people with strong eligibility. For example, somebody who's technically very, very knowledgeable, somebody who is superior in design, somebody who is very, very good in product knowledge, we need. And get these people's team roles. Are they plot? Are they shapers? Are they monitor evaluators? Understand. Developing team roles can be done using some very good invent exercises. Then make sure that there are suitable people. Eligibility is about qualification. Suitability is about behavior. Qualifications and behavior are quite different. We need a combination of both. And once we do that, we all understand each other very well. And then we have a perfect combination of a great team which can work on such a large opportunities large account and a large key prospect we want to break in. Therefore, friends, teams in selling calls for three things. Being clear on the team's purpose. What do we want to do with this opportunity? Win it. Win it at this price. We want to break into this prospect with this entry point very effectively. Being clear on the team's purpose. Number two, understanding the customer people thoroughly. It is not just about their qualification. It is not about experience. Understanding them as people. Understanding their behavior preferences. Understanding what makes them tick. Then the chemistry can start working very effectively. Third, which is very vital is, what are the roles that each one of us play within our team? Somebody can build a contact very nicely. Somebody can use logic to communicate very effectively. Somebody can actually Make sure that anything we send to the customer or present to the customer is immaculate and perfect. That means we use our strengths to contribute to the roles in the most effective way. If we can do that, it works as a well-oiled, cohesive, and outstanding team. If we do that, we can be very successful in the way we work as a team with large prospects, large accounts, and large competition breaking as well. Finally. Five guidelines for excellence in sales teams. Number one, remember, people are different, both at our end and customer end. The good news is people are different. Recognize that every team needs diversity. Diversity builds the best of this in a most beautiful way. 
Number two, focus on creating the right balance to handle the complexity at customer end. First, understand the customer very well. First, understand the customer people. Do a lot of research because these are high risk opportunities. Get the right balance in your team to make sure that you can handle the complexity very effectively. Third, essentially, understand the customer's buying process in depth and use our team resources. Where to pitch in what? Who should go when? Who makes the first move? How many people go on each call? Very wise way of doing it. And match the customer's buying process and our sales process with the right team resources. It's not simply going there. Every move, when you want to catch an elephant, has to be very strategically done with the right people, with the right suitability in terms of behavior, matching with the customer, and the right capability in terms of technical as well as product capability as well. Number four, focus on suitability, not just eligibility. People buy from people. Adapting that, looking at the chemistry of people is extremely vital. Suitability is all about aptitude. Sometime in the start of the webinar, somebody used the word attitude. I just change it a little bit. Attitude is difficult to understand. What we understand is behavior. What we see is behavior. Attitude lies below the behavior, beneath the behavior. It's like the iceberg at the bottom. But what we can't see is attitude. What we can see is behavior. If I shift the word attitude to aptitude, orientation. Some people can have long conversations with the customer. Some people will only give precise answers. You need both depending upon the customer profile. So look at suitability in a team, not just eligibility. And finally, when you put the team in sales, build a team charter at the very beginning. Who does what? And who chips in when? Make sure our roles are very clear. We work like a well-oiled missionary because excellence in real sales teams requires a way of working which minimizes our weaknesses, maximizes our strengths. Remember, nobody is perfect as each person but a team can be. If we do that by understanding our team roles, understanding customer's team role, using our capability and suitability, and adapting to the customer's team very effectively, we have a good chance of winning big wins. And therefore, let me put it in a simple way, teams in selling make big wins happen. If you want a small win, no need to worry about teams in selling. But if you want a big win, you have to really, really make the team which makes the big wins happen. That is Belbin for excellence in sales team. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. We will also send you this slideshow. We can send, uh, we can send uh, 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 the, the recording as well if you require. No need to worry about it. And the idea behind this is to help you to learn and be effective. So here's my mail ID. I can send it across. And if any of you want to have these, you can send your mail ID to us as well on this mail ID. I'm happy to answer your question. Anything that you want to ask, just go ahead, guys. Yes, Tamil Sheldon, we'll do that. I got lots of mail IDs, absolutely. But I'll be happy to hear. Any questions you have, any thoughts? What do you think of this whole idea? Do you see is relevant? All right, there's some questions from Hitesh. How to approach client with not specific contact detail available? Um, that's, 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 that's a good question, Hitesh. But I just like to answer, in today's world, with so much of social media available, it, it is a, it's a good idea to do some good preparatory work to get to do the research, get some information, because when you're targeting a big opportunity and a win, it is required to prepare much better before, otherwise the risk is very high. That's the only answer I can give you, Hitesh. How do you reactivate a cold lead? I like this question, Jackson. 
I like this question beautifully. Let me answer this question. Uh, I have a new term for this, for sales guy. I just discussed this afternoon with a client in Mumbai. I'm in Mumbai right now, and the client is excited. Normally, we talk about nurturing the customer. You must have heard the word nurturing. I'm typing it again. Nurturing the customer. That's the word you already heard about it. But the new word, which I think is extremely important, is we have to nurture a prospect. Nurture a prospect. Nurturing a customer comes after he is our customer. Nurturing a prospect comes much before he can become our customer. Nurturing a prospect requires, in many ways, today you can be connected to many people in the world. I think from their LinkedIn profiles, I mean, I, I think from their Twitter, uh, talking to people in the organization, you can understand their orientation, their lives, their preferences to a reasonable extent. And you can start connecting with the contact, not in the way of selling, but in the way of nurturing, sending him something interesting, writing to him something which is useful. If he's a precise person, Send something which is short. If he likes to read a lot more, something something much more detailed. Look at his business. How can you add value to his business? You slowly start doing. You become top of the mind for him. You are in the mind share of the individual. Then make your approach as a team very effectively. You can take the help of your own team to contribute in a large way. If you want big prospects, you have to nurture the prospect very effectively. P.S. Money asked a good question. How can we leverage Belbin in daily transactional selling? Possible uh, money, beautifully well. Let me give an example. Let's say you're meeting a customer. You are an existing customer. Maybe you can understand his behavior. When we send you the slides, you can see some of the key words that are there for each. You can make an intelligent guess, an educated guess of what person is he? Is he impatient? Is he only goal oriented? Is he asking for sound logic? Is he less detailed? Is he a person who wants to know a lot more? I think once you understand that, you can adapt your approach to that person. Otherwise, remember, if I want to sell something to someone, I need to adapt my style to the other person's way of behavior. If I do that, I'm likely to be more successful as well. I'll give an example. If the other person is not very relationship oriented, if he's not a resource investigator, speaks less, I would keep my conversation professional, minimum, and to the point. If the other person has ability or a desire to communicate, I will adapt a little bit differently, bring forth that team role of mine. So you can use Bellman very successfully in even in transactions selling money. If you want more about it, I can send you some information, but I hope this gives you some answer as well. Hitesh has a good question. How to convince management new business plan from conventional business ideas? Uh, help me understand this question a little better. What's the context you are talking, Hitesh? Hitesh can explain a little bit better, or you want to exchange mails with me, I'm happy to do that as well. Give me some more details of this, I'll be happy to explain to you as much as needed. Don't worry about it. Okay, fantastic, great. Okay, great. Uh, do you see the importance of understanding people through their behavior and then using that to become effective in sales? Do you see it makes sense? All of you? Yes. Absolutely. I'm giving you a language to work on that. And if you're interested, we can send you some more information on this, which will help you to really use a language to profile people well and then adapt yourself very effectively individually or as a team. And that can make us very good in selling. Mind you, as long as people buy from people, I can see for the next five years, 10 years at least, 20 years maybe, still people will buy from people. Even with technology, 
even with social selling, the people element could become a very, very critical differentiator. And that's where we as sales guys can make a big impact. Any more questions, you can write to me. I'm most welcome. Have a lovely evening. And thank you very much. And have a great success in using this and make it sharper in the way you work. How can we generate Belbin scores for a key sales member? There's a process for that money. And if you can send me a mail ID, we'll respond to you absolutely. Thank you.